we would not be doing this story if you hadn't told us this is a safety issue. I think it's very much needed in the Metroplex, nationally. They power our phones, our scooters, even some of our cars, but lithium ion batteries can also spark fires. Fires so intense they can at times pose a challenge for even veteran firefighters. That's why CBS Texas and several North Texas fire departments worked together, even setting that car on fire, just to show you about this growing danger. Our I team's Ginger Allen tonight with what we all need to know. In March, a scooter battery destroyed this apartment in California. By June, an e-bike blaze killed a woman in this fire in New York. In July, an electric car shut down the traffic here in Boston. And then just last month, a phone charger overheated on this international flight, filling the cabin with smoke. This proves these batteries that power our lives are a challenge for us, and as you're about to see, for firefighters. Does this feel like yesterday? Does it, yeah, you never, never really forget when something like this happens. It's been more than a year since Sean Knoll got that chilling call. When I got on the ring foot, I just saw a bunch of, bunch of smoke coming out of the front door. His 10 and 13 year old boys were alone in their Leander home. Then when I saw the fire department come in and, and then the smoke turning black and then I started seeing flames shoot out the front of my house. The boys escaped, but their two cats and within minutes their entire home were gone. Investigators traced it to a lithium ion battery inside a vacuum. People have more devices plugged into their house than I ever did. Um, so take this problem seriously because it, it is a real threat. These are e-bikes and scooters. And here in University Park, we see these a lot at SMU. The campus cruisers haven't caused an incident at the nearby university, but Fire Marshal Marty Korn says it's just a matter of time. It's scary to hear you say it's only a matter of time, but you know Absolutely. because you've seen it at one of the local schools already. <laughs> That's going to blow. Yep. It started um, off gassing, so internal heating, smoking. A science project with a lithium ion battery overheated. This gas is the stuff that's inside the battery. It's toxic. Korn says the device was left on the charger too long, just like the vacuum that destroyed Noel's house. This is a laptop. Um, and like many of the items on this table, the device was likely damaged inside. Damage that can happen just from dropping a laptop, a phone, or a tool. At some point, this would have started on fire. And it would not have been a typical fire. Departments across North Texas tell us lithium ion battery fires burn hotter, require more water, spew toxins, and... There's not a lot of data out there on what the best option is to put out these EV fires. At Tarrant County College, Euless Fire teamed up with the Fire Prevention Association of North Texas, setting this car on fire to show us two battle tactics they're testing. First up, the turtle nozzle, which you see sliding under the vehicle. It has capabilities of delivering up to 500 gallons per minute. On electric vehicles, those powerful streams blast up into the battery compartment. Next, a fire blanket. It can help control the toxic smoke. But this one comes with a challenge. In May, fire researchers issued a warning about the blankets, stating they may pose explosion risk by trapping those dangerous gases. Fort Worth Fire also demonstrated the blankets for us. They've put them on all 71 trucks, but also with caution. They too are arming themselves with options. This is what we call a, an EV plug. Said it disables the vehicle to the point to where it puts itself in park and it won't drive off on us. It's a kit inside every one of them. Yes, ma'am. They've also put tow kits inside all the chief cars. And we can just drag it out in the street and get that uh, problem away from the home to where it's going to save more property. Uh, it could put less lives at risk. In Plano, a crew used a tow hook to pull a burning Tesla out of a garage. Those guys on scene recognized that it was a potentially a, therm, a lithium ion battery fire and what it was going to take to put that out. So removing it from that situation uh, made the situation better. 
And in July, in Louisville, crews there made the same move, also towing an electric vehicle away from a structure to avoid a spread. UL Solutions has been tracking a steady rise in lithium ion battery cases globally since 1995. They've recorded nearly 17,400 incidents, more than 4,500 injuries, and nearly 700 fatalities. The Consumer Product Safety Commission has logged hundreds more, everything from bloated batteries to burns, from exploding radios and overheating power tools to massage guns, toys, even shoes. And so far this year, here in North Texas, from phones and vapes alone, Parkland Hospital reports 13 battery-related burns. Every day we learn something different about it, and uh, so we just try to stay up to speed. We're not trying to scare everybody, but we just want to make sure people are aware. I didn't, never took, took a second thought, leaving something plugged in. And now I do, and now I hope the next person will too after they hear the story. So what has a lithium ion battery? Well, it's pretty much anything around you that is rechargeable. The Salina Fire Department actually gave us this tour of a typical home, just showing us all the devices around us. We went into every room. You need to watch out for these devices getting hotter than normal, showing signs of swelling, or if it does have a screen like a cell phone or a computer, you need to watch for discoloration on that screen. We've all seen that happen. So it sounds like uh, awareness, obviously uh, good advice is the key for everybody here. What'd you learn from the fire crew specifically about how to avoid problems? So much advice, Doug. Before you buy anything with a lithium ion battery, take the time to see if it has a stamp from a nationally recognized testing lab. Only use the charging cables that come with the product. This one is so important. If you have to replace those, buy them from the manufacturer. Do not buy those off-brand chargers. Do not overcharge your device. Once it reaches 100%, get it off the charger. And only charge them on hard surfaces. So don't put that on your pillow or your bed or near your couch. And then charge your big devices, such as bikes and scooters, especially you college students. Take them outside. Keep those power tools outside when you're charging. I will put all of those on our website. I'll also put Salina's fire tour of the home that we showed you. And then we're gonna talk about reignition. If you have a fire, you need to be aware that these batteries can reignite not only hours, but even days later, Doug. Ginger Allen, all great knowledge for all of us. Thank you.